It's read two, one, and go. Today we want to learn about the laws of limits. Hi. 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 Um, for your actual birthday, am I supposed to put 06 or 23? I don't care. It doesn't matter. It's fine. Um, limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x. Today we want to learn about calculating limits. It's no big deal. Uh, this is equal to the limit. As x approaches a of f of x plus the limit as x approaches a of g of x. And what does that mean? Well, very simple. Suppose that we have the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared minus 6x. What you can do in that situation is you can simply just... Uh, find the limit as x approaches 1 of x squared, which is 1. And then you can find the limit as x approaches 1 of negative 6x, which is negative 6. Meaning you can just plug it in. Okay? So you don't have to find the limit of every single term. You can just plug it into the whole thing, evaluate. In this case, you get negative 5. Very useful feature. It also works in this case that you could just separate it using subtraction. In this situation, if you have a constant times a function or something of that nature, you could simply do this. You could say, well, we're going to take um, the constant times the limit of the function as x approaches a. So you could move a constant out front. It's okay if you have two functions that are multiplied together. You could simply just multiply the two limits. If you have two functions that are being divided, you can go ahead and divide those two limits. If you have it raised to power, you can go ahead and just raise that limit to the power. It works exactly the way that we would expect it to. Okay, exactly the way that we would expect it to. Okay. So uh, a couple of limits that we want to talk about that are not as obvious. Um, I'm going to go to a. Uh, that, that's right. Uh, Emma shared with me, as soon as I exit out of this type of screen, it doesn't pick up the video anymore, does it? No. Okay, so um, I won't do that, so I'm going to have to go to extend the page, or try that, um, to get some extra space here. So um, the question is, what is the limit of a constant? So I'm looking at the limit as, say, x approaches 2 of the function 5. So does anybody know what the graph of Five looks like we're to graph five. Horizontal line, y equals five. Looks something like this. Okay. One, two, three, four, five. It looks like this. So think about it. As x approaches two, one, two, what is the output approaching? Five. So therefore the limit of a constant is always just the constant. Everybody see that? Okay. So as we uh, figure that out, we'll say the limit of the constant is just that constant. Oh, wow. Oh, struggling there, huh? Let's try to... There it goes. Look at that. Pretty cool. All right. So the limit of a constant is just that constant. Uh, here we have the identity function x. Notice how if you plug in a for x, you just get a. So, for example, the limit as x approaches 3 of x is just going to be 3, because you plug 3 in, that's what you get. Uh, if you have a nicely behaving polynomial, or you're raising it to a power, the limit is just a to the n. Just plug in a. If you have a, a radical, you can simply just plug in a, and you get the nth root of a. And remember that if you have a radical like this, the nth root, that's the same thing as the limit um, of the function to the 1 over n power. You can write it as 1 over n. So in many situations, we learn this to be true, that if you want to evaluate a limit, 
All you need to do is just plug in the x value into the function. So direct substitution for a polynomial or rational function, you can simply just substitute. Oh goodness. You can simply just substitute a in and you get f of a. Sometimes they don't work like that, but sometimes they work quite nicely in that way. So the first thing we're going to do is we're just going to practice some of our laws of limits. Uh, this says, given that the limit as x approaches a of the function is 6, we have 1, limit equal to 6, 1 is equal to negative 2, and 1 is equal to 0. It ask, asks us, what is the limit as x approaches a of f of x plus g of x? So all I need to do is find the limit as x goes to a of f of x. Now I'll add that to the limit as x approaches a of g of x. What is the limit as x approaches a of f of x? Six. It is 6. And g of x would be? Negative 2. Negative 2. Okay, and so 6 plus negative 2 is 4. So I won't write it out in both terms every time. I just did that one time uh, to try to you know, make a point. Uh, if you notice B, I have division, so I can simply just divide the two limits. The limit for F was 6, and the limit for H was 0. zero. And so if you end up with 0 in the denominator, uh, we really just don't know what this is. It could be undefined, it could be does not exist, it could be infinity. You have all sorts of situations. We really can't tell right now. We would have to be able to look at a graph or a table. But we don't have anything that would produce a graph or a table, do we? We don't. Uh, notice that letter C says negative 3 times g of x plus 5. So all we have to do is negative 3 times, what's the limit for g of x? Negative 2 plus 5. And so you can see that we get uh, 11. Go ahead and do letter D on your own. Everybody come up with six? Very good. Flip it on over. So now let's do the same type of piece, but we're going to look at a graphical situation here. Okay. Uh, did my best to be able to produce these in a way that we could read them. Uh, as you look at this example here, this uh, function right here is a barcode function. That's what that means when it goes up and down like that. And you learn that for the barcode, the limit does not exists. So that's something we'll keep in mind. So notice uh, for this example, it says uh, the limit of f of x times g of x as x approaches 1. This is the function f. This is the function g. So I'm going to approach 1. I must approach it from the left and I must approach it from the right. What is that limit? Is it 3 or is it 4? It is definitely 3. 4 is the value of the function. That is not the limit. Somebody asked yesterday, said, what is a limit? The limit is not the function value. The limit is what the output is approaching. It's what it's getting very, very, very close to. And notice that these values are getting very close to 3. Okay. Now we do g of x. As we approach 1, what's the output approaching? Negative 1. So this will produce negative 3. Not very happy with how the how this is writing. My handwriting gets very sloppy with this. I'm trying to figure that out. Uh, we look at the second one. We have 2 times uh, f of, so 2 times f of x as x approaches 0. So let's look at x approaches 0 here. I'm going to x approaches 0. What's the output there? Yeah, we'll say two and a half. Really doesn't like that three, huh? 
Uh, three times g of x, I'm going to let g of x approach zero. As g of x approaches zero, what's the output approach? Negative two. Negative two. And so I get five minus negative six or 11. Is that right? I'm starting to read my handwriting. So we look at letter C, the limit as G approaches two. So G is going to approach two. I approach from the left. And what's the output as I approach to the left? Zero. What's the limit as I approach from the right? Does not exist. If part of the limit does not exist, then the entire piece will not exist. If you come up with does not exist for any part of it, then that will be the whole. And the last one, uh, the limit as x approaches 5. So first of all, let's figure out the limit as x approaches 5 for f of x. As x approaches 5, the output approaches 4. So you have 4 times 2x squared. Anybody want to guess what I plug in for x? Five. I do plug in 5. So it's 2 times 5 squared. And 5 squared is 25 times 4 is 100 times 2 is 200. Where did you get the X is approaching 5, so the 5 is what I plug in. Okay. All right. So there we have an example of some laws of some limits, and you saw them graphically. Now let's work through the algebra. If you have a nice behaving function, you can simply just plug in uh, the x value. Notice it's asking for the limit of x to the fourth minus 3x squared plus 1. Simply just plug in 1 into both or all three situations, and this one will be... Uh, 1 to the 4th, which is 1 minus 3 plus 1. And we get a grand total of negative, negative 1. That's the limit. In this situation, we plug in 0, and you get the cubed root of negative 27, which is negative 3. Negative three. It's weird, like this three, I got it to show up really well, but this three, I don't. I wonder, like, yeah, it's odd, odd. Negative three is odd. <laughs> Thank you. Look at the next one. This is where life gets a little bit more interesting. I plug in three. What do you get when you plug in three to the top? I get zero on the top. What do you get when you plug in three to the bottom? You get zero. This is the situation we talked about yesterday. Every time you are looking at an equation for a line tangent at a point, the slope will always produce zero over zero. But there are always ways to figure this out. Obviously, what can you do to the top? Yeah, it factors quite nicely. Uh, hopefully, you remember all of your factoring techniques. You did get credit for college algebra last year, so you should really be great at all of your factoring techniques. So x plus 3 times x minus 3 divided by x minus 3. Notice that the um, x minus 3 and x minus 3 reduced to 1. I can now plug in the 3, and you get a grand total of 6. six. Please try the next one on your own. Okay, you can see that the x's should cancel, and when you plug in 0 after that, you get negative 5 divided by 1. Negative 5 is that result. We all good? Okay, 
So what about when it doesn't look like that type of option? Here we have uh, h minus 2 quantity squared my, uh, minus 4 all over h. Um, it says as h approaches 0. Okay? I always like to start by plugging in 0. I notice if you plug in 0, you're going to get negative 2 squared, which is 4, minus 4 all divided by 0. And that gives me 0 over 0, does it not? So any thoughts on what I can do to maybe work this out? Let's just square this top and see what happens. The limit as h goes to 0 of, what do you get if you take h minus 2 and you square it? H plus 4, I then have the minus 4, and I have it all divided by h. What happens? The positive 4 and the negative 4 will go to 0. And then what can you factor out? You can then factor out an h. The limit as h goes to 0 of h times h minus 4 all divided by h. And we notice that the h's will cancel. And at that point, you can plug in your value of 0 and you get a grand total of negative 4. h plus 1 cubed, that will be a little bit more, won't it? Okay, let's multiply that out. We have h squared plus 2h plus 1. We'll have that quantity times another h plus 1. Notice how I tried to save a little bit of time on my multiplication. I took the h squared, or h plus 1 squared, and then I'm going to multiply it by h plus 1. So we have the limit as h goes to 0 of, if I multiply everything through by h, I will get h cubed. I'll get a 2h squared. I will get an h. And then I move on to multiplying by my 1. And I get an h squared. I get a 2h. And I get a 1. What am I missing? a minus 1, and that's all divided by h. This works out quite nicely because the 1's cancel. Everything that's left has an h. So I should be able to divide out that h, and I'll be left with the limit as h goes to 0 of h squared plus 2h plus 1 plus h plus 2. And now something that I very much enjoy at this part is what value are we plugging in for h? Zero. zero. So notice everything that has an h just goes away because you're plugging in zero, and the result is three. That is my limit. Gens, isn't that 2h supposed to be 3h? Um, because there's a 2h squared and an h squared. Right, and so the 2h squared and the h squared maps with this 2h and the 1h. Oh, and it's the other one. See it? Yeah. Okay. Thank you for bringing that up, though. I could easily miss that. Letter G is a little bit different. I'm going to show you a new technique, one that you have not seen before. It's very, very important that you pay close attention to this. Okay. Um, I'm going to extend the page just so we can see it. Hey, down. come on, yeah, down, thank you. And uh, I want you to notice that uh, uh, we focused on expressions like this, such as uh, x squared minus 9. Does that factor? Yeah. It does. It factors to x plus 3 times x minus 3. Okay? And if you would turn this around and say 9 minus x squared, we would say that also factors to 3 minus x times 3 plus x. Okay? So then let's look at another option. Suppose you had an expression of 9 minus x. And you would say, well, 
that doesn't look like it really factors, does it? Because you do have a perfect square here, but that is not a perfect square. But isn't everything a perfect square? For example, what do you multiply by itself to get 5? The square root of 5. So what do you multiply by itself to get x? The square root of x. So this actually does factor to be 3 minus the root of x times 3 plus the root of x. And so we can factor that. If we take that knowledge and go back to this problem right here, notice we can work through this. If you plug in 1 right away, you're left with 0 divided by 0. That's an indication that something will work its way out. We write the limit as x approaches 1 of how can I factor 1 minus x, looking at what we just did? 1 plus the square root of x. 1 plus the root of x times 1 minus the root of x, all divided by 1 minus the root of x. Notice how 1 minus the root of x, 1 minus the root of x, that will divide to be 0. And you're left with 1 plus the root of x. You plug in 1, you get a grand total of? Two. Sometimes you end up with a situation where nothing really seems to be able to cancel. And you're really struggling to figure out what could we do. If you were to go ahead in this situation and plug in your zero, uh, notice that as you plug in zero, um, you get in the top. 3 minus 3 divided by 0, or 0 over 0. But there's nothing to square. There's nothing to factor. And so what would we do? And when you don't know how to math something, you turn to a different subject. When we don't know how to do the math, we turn to Spanish. Spanish. We multiply by the? Conjugate. Very good. Multiplying by the conjugate here is really going to help us out. Um, it's a nice technique. It comes up quite a lot. We're going to use it on a number of occasions. This is to kind of prepare us for something we'll see later. And the conjugate, if you remember, it means that we just change the ending. So it's square root of h plus 9. And instead of a minus 3, it's a plus 3. Okay? And we multiply by that same thing on the bottom. Square root of h plus 9 and a plus 3. We have that on the top, and we have that on the bottom. Fortunately, we are very intelligent. You guys have all worked through this before. You've seen how it works out. If you take the square root of h plus 9 times the square root of h plus 9, you get h plus 9. Then, remember, if you were to multiply this out, what happens to the middles? They disappear. That's why we've shown this many times. So the middles disappear. And then what do you get at the end? Uh, negative 3 times a positive 3 is a negative 9. Notice in the denominator you have this h. And then it will be multiplied by this entire set. So the denominator does look a little bit gross. I have the square root of h plus 9. And then a plus 3. Okay, square root of h plus 9 plus 3. So 9 minus 9 gives me 0. And then notice what happens with the h's. What will happen with the h's? We'll divide off, leaving me with a 1 on the top. So you end up with a 1 on the top. And in the denominator, as you plug in your 0, 0 plus 9 is 9. The square root is 3 plus 3 is 6. So the limit is 1 6. Not too bad? Okay, I'd like you to take out your graphing calculator, please. Your graphing calculator. That doesn't work anymore, does it, to draw a circle around stuff?
I feel so stupid sometimes. Okay, so we're going to skip letter I. Really not that important. Um, you uh, come across that. Um, I'm sure we'll be able to look at it in class later. But as we look at this uh, limit as X approaches negative 5, notice if you plug in negative 5, you do get 0 divided by 0. But there's nothing really to factor here. And there's nothing to separate. Um, I will show you how this can work out algebraically. But first, I want you to just understand that when you can't make an algebraic argument for something, you can go ahead and turn right to your graphing technology. Okay, so take out your calculator and please go into y equals. And as you're in y equals, notice I can't bring up the calculator. I did find a calculator I can use on this, but we have to purchase it. I'm waiting for the math department to make a purchase and I'll be able to bring a calculator up here. Okay, so sorry about that. As you're in y equals, you're going to grab the absolute value piece. So if you're wondering where absolute value is, I like to go second, calculate, and uh, I'll do it right here in front of you so everybody can see what I would do. So if you're trying to follow along, if I go into y equals, I go second, so the blue button right here, and then calculate is my zero option. And the first one is ABS. Or it's a trace option. At the top. No, no. Uh, did I say calculate? Yeah. Yeah. I'm sorry, second catalog. Okay. Catalog. Sorry about that. Man, my handwriting turns out really poorly up there. Um, sorry about that. So, again, as you're in Y equals second catalog, and notice how you have ABS. So, if you press enter on ABS, you can then write X plus 5 in there. Some of you will actually have absolute value signs. Some of you will need to close your parentheses, right? And then you're going to go divided by, and please make sure you put parentheses around the entire denominator. So parentheses, x plus 5. And what I'd like you to do is press zoom 6, so we all make sure we're in the same viewing window. So zoom 6 for zoom standard. And I want you to talk to your peer about what you determine this limit to be. Talk and see if you come up with an idea what this limit should be. Go. Okay, thoughts. What is this limit? As I approach from the left, what is the height of the function? Negative 1. As I approach from the right, what's the height of the function? Positive 1. So does the limit exist? No. So in this situation, I told you 0 over 0 will most of the time work itself out. But in this situation, it does not in this absolute value scenario. So the limit does not exist. Okay? And if you wanted an algebraic argument, notice that an absolute value sign could have two values. It can have the positive and it can have the negative. Okay? So if you write x plus 5 over x plus 5, that is obviously equal to 1. And negative x minus 5 over x plus 5, if you factor out that negative, you will get a negative 1. So as you're approaching from the left, negative 1. As you're approaching from the right, positive one okay all right so you've seen a lot of algebraic examples if you take out your worksheets at this point Uh, you can see that in your worksheets, you have uh, this section that is referred to as calculating limits. Calculating limits, okay? So uh, you have a graphical example, which we talked about in class. And then after that, most of it is an algebraic example. Algebraic example, okay? The lesson tomorrow is very, very, very short. It is simply a piecewise function assignment. You can possibly finish that assignment in class. And so the plan for the rest of the time is today we did 2.3, and tomorrow we'll do another 2.3. Friday you have no school. 
Um, and then uh, Monday, you have no school. So on Thursday, we will give you a work day, and I will give to you the study guide. Actually, I could probably give you the study guide tomorrow on Wednesday. And then Tuesday uh, will be time to work on your study guide. We'll test Wednesday when you get back, tens Wednesday when you get back. So all we'll do is we'll cover one more short lesson tomorrow, and then we'll be good to go. Okay? Well set? Okay. What's that? So I would be uh, right here to this calculating limits piece on uh, 2.3, and uh, I would carry there. There's a fair number of oh man, my eyes. Uh, I would I carry through to notice that the back page is optional. There's some more challenging problems if you'd like to pursue a couple of more difficult. But uh, do those three pages right there. You won't be able to finish all the homework packet because we are we're going to test before we finish. So we're not going to do all five uh, you, uh, lessons. We're going to push two of those off to the next test. Okay. So go ahead, uh, take out whatever you want to work on. I'll come around and answer some questions. You have about 10 minutes. First question is Hannah's. Let me stop the video.